All right, hello everybody and good morning. It is uh, May 5th, happy Cinco de Mayo if you celebrate Cinco de Mayo or uh, Revenge of the Revenge of the 5th <laughs> after May the 4th be with you. Uh, Star Wars week and uh, Cinco de Mayo, we got lots of things going on. But thank you so much uh, everyone for, for being here. I see a lot of you getting logged on uh, and joining me. Uh, we're here for my research methods class uh, and it is the 5th of May. Uh, so this is week 16. We're in our second to last live stream that we will have. We have this one and then we will have one next week. And then our semester is sadly over or maybe it's uh, happily over, right? Uh, it's always mixed because we have summer, which is exciting, but it's always a little bit sad uh, to have a class be done. So uh, my plan for today is I want to talk just a little bit about last week, like usual, and then we'll talk about the materials that are due this week. And just a couple of mentions for next week, which we'll focus on more next week. Uh, but that is our plan for today. Uh, I hope everyone is hanging in there. I know this time of the semester is always very busy and a little overwhelming. So, so hang in there. We are very close to being done. Um, and so uh, don't give up now. We're, we're at the finish line. So uh, let's go ahead and go over to Canvas together and we can take a look at things going on. Uh, as I said, we are here week 16. So we have this week and next week. Uh, but let's go back and take a look at last week really quickly uh, before we move on. So um, last week we had discussion number 15. We were talking a lot about the idea of replication, uh, replicating studies, generalization, um, applying things to the real world. And so I had a little scenario for you where we were talking about a replication study using polling data. Um, and, and these were the questions you were supposed to answer. A lot of you did a really uh, nice job looking at some of the reasons why the study might not have been successfully repli replicated. And uh, a lot of you also did a really good job talking about some of the potential improvements that we could do uh, to scientific research or scientific practice. So some of the stuff I was looking for in number one, some of the possible reasons why the study might have failed. I was looking for you to say um, that maybe the second study used different operationalizations of weather uh, and mood, which would mean it wasn't quite a direct replication. The original sample was very small, only 28 participants. So um, there's a good chance that there weren't a lot of chance values influencing the data. Usually some of the information and data is at least partially influenced by chance. And because the replication study had almost a million people um, you know, it might have been that some of those chance values were canceled out. So we have a really small sample and then like an overly large sample. And so that might have played into it. Uh, the original effects might have been very contextually sensitive. Um, the replication might have been too different in some way. A single study can always have the potential to miss a true finding. You can get that zero effect even if there was something present, just um, because the data maybe was wrong or the things were a little bit too different. Um, and ha without having access to all of the original studies, materials, and data, it's hard to know if maybe they had some questionable research practices that might have been implemented. Uh, there was a lot of different reasons. Um, that table, again, I, I think very helpful for why we might not have successfully replicated. Uh, some potential improvements, we could have had um, a larger sample size, uh, you know, in the original one, we could require larger sample sizes in general. We could implement uh, and really focus on open science and pre-registration like we talked about in the chapter. Uh, and then journals could devote a section specifically maybe to even replication studies. And so ones that uh, maybe aren't new research, but just replication in general. So as I said, most of you did a really nice job. I think at this point, you know what I'm looking for and you know um, how to get those points on the discussions. Overall, really, really nicely done. Uh, we move on this week to our very last topics, right? So week number 16, we're looking at chapter four um, and our last discussion, our last lecture and PowerPoint slides. Uh, I'm sentimental, I do a lot of lasts at the end, so I'm sorry for that today. Probably be even worse next week when it's our last live stream. <laughs> but um, make sure that you read chapter four in the textbook. And then of course, go through my lecture that I've made for you for chapter four. And again, we're looking at ethical guidelines for psychological research. And I think this is a really nice way to kind of end the semester uh, topic-wise, looking at some of the ethical principles 
and things that might uh, protect participants, excuse me, uh, from when they participate in research. So make sure you read through the summary um, related to ethical violations, some of the, um, the studies that were done that were, you know, um, questionable ethically. Make sure you read through all of that. On the Beyond the Book page, I have a little bit more about other uh, famous unethical psychology studies. There have been several of these, like the Stanford uh, Prison Experiment, uh, the Little Albert Experiment, uh, you know, the ones using dogs as well, where we had learned helplessness. There's definitely been a few experiments that were done in the course of psychology that were unethical, and they wouldn't be allowed to be done today. So uh, just a few more of those for you. And then, of course, on the last page, as always, you have the key terms in review. Here are all the terms that you need to know uh, for the chapter, for the exam, which we'll be taking next week. So uh, read through all of that. Click on anything that I include in there for you. Um, of course, you can listen to it as well. Uh, you also have the lecture video as usual. So this one's posted on uh, YouTube because there weren't any outside clips. So uh, make sure that you watch this, take notes. Uh, this is me covering uh, the materials for this week so that you have uh, the opportunity to understand them a little bit better and in a different way. So take notes and pay attention and all of that. Uh, once you have read the chapter and you've completed the lecture and the lecture video, you'll of course then want to do discussion uh, number 16. As always, we're 15 points, uh, your opportunity to show off your knowledge and understanding of the materials. And so for this one, you'll be applying that knowledge gained related to chapter four on ethical guidelines for psychology research. I want you to read the short scenario below and then answer questions afterward related to chapter four. So research scenario number one, and these are brief. A developmental psychologist applies to an institutional review board or an IRB proposing to observe children ages two to 10 playing in a local McDonald's play area. Because the area is public, the researcher does not plan to ask for informed consent from the children's parents. Number two, a social psychologist plans to hand out surveys in her undergraduate class. The survey asks about students' study habits. The psychologist does not ask the students to put their names on the survey. Instead, students will put completed surveys into a large box at the back of the room. Because of the low risk involved in participation and the anonymous nature of the survey, the researcher requests to be exempted from formal informed consent procedures. So two very brief scenarios. And for each of these, what I want you to do is to discuss two different things. Number one, what are the ethical concerns that exist for the study? Be specific and be sure to reference specific concepts from chapter four to earn full credit. And number two, what questions might an IRB or um, an institutional review board ask about the research study in order to decide if it's ethical or not? So for both of these, make sure that you're kind of dissecting it. Are there any potential ethical concerns? What are they? How would we address them? Um, kind of talk about them a little bit. And then what questions might an IRB ask about the research study? And so when you're ready to answer that, as usual, you'll hit reply and you can uh, answer my questions there. Don't forget to also reply to a classmate to get those two points. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is our last discussion. So uh, take your time, show off your knowledge and comprehension of chapter four and get those final discussion related points. We also of course have optional Twitch extra credit number 16, but I'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, remember as well that next week was opened up for you as of last week. So if you wanted to work ahead, let's say you know next week is going to be crazy with finals beginning or just whatever you have going on, you are welcome to start week number 17 now. Exam number four is open. Here's the study guide for you right above it. Remember that it does have a small cumulative component to it. Uh, and I'll be talking more about these things next week. This is what I'll focus on. Uh, in our last live stream next week, but I just want to mention them now for those of you who are thinking of working ahead. The exam is right here. You can click on it. It's worth 50 points, same guidelines and everything like usual. There's also an anonymous closing survey that I have for you here that I would like you to take. Uh, and again, I'll go over these next week, but just uh, your closing thoughts and comments, um, things that will help me uh, if I, I would like to make the class better in any way, address any concerns that you may have had. There's also a one uh, SLO question. This is incredibly basic and I really hope that you're able to get this correct, but make sure that you click on this and answer that one question. Otherwise, the big thing for next week is you're turning in that experiment proposal project. 
And so that's what I'll cover in depth next week on our live stream. But remember, you started on this a couple of weeks ago uh, when we focused on that for a week. So the big things for next week are exam number four and that experiment proposal project. I posted on here a couple of sample papers. So I have one, two, three different sample papers for you. So you can see how other people um, did their experiment proposal project and did it well. I also have three sample flyers. Remember that as part of that project, you are creating a one page flyer and also a very brief video talking about your flyer and your experiment proposal, proposal that you have. So um, when you're ready, you can click on this and you can go ahead and upload all of those things here where it says start assignment. All of the directions are here as well, along with the rubric, but I will be covering that next week. So I don't wanna to spend too much time there, but if you wanted to work ahead, all of those things are up for you. And then we will have one last uh, Twitch live stream next week and an extra credit with it. Uh, and that will be it for us. So um, any questions about any of that for now? I do have a couple of reminders for you. So let me put those uh, into the chat while I'm waiting for you. Uh, the first one as always, Oops, for some reason here it booted me out. Um, so for some reason, as always here, um, let me put this in here. Um, don't forget to double check your subscription status really quickly. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed or if you've lost your subscription status, please make sure to renew that. That'll help you for this week and next week, especially if you're watching this later. If you're watching this later, um, you can still get credit for joining me live if you've done that, uh, because it will show up for me in my list. Um, the other thing to remember is that our last Twitch live stream, so our very last one of the semester will be on Thursday next week. And Thursday next week is the 12th. So Thursday, May 12th at 10 o'clock. Let me just put that in the chat here. On Thursday, May 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. And the other one is that uh, our class will officially end on Sunday, May 15th at 11.59 p.m. Okay, so that is the other reminder that I have for you, that our class, we have all of this week and all of next week, and then our class will officially end next Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, but I'll remind you of that on our live stream next week. We had a question here, is the project and one page flyer turned in on the same tab. Yes, yeah, so if you're on Canvas and you click on Experiment Proposal Project right here, this is where you will submit it. So you'll click Start Assignment and then um, you can ad add your files here. So you can upload uh, multiple files uh, right here. And I did um, remove the file restrictions on here so that you can um, upload like an image of the flyer um, or uh, or whatnot, and a video. You could also use the webcam here to record your video if you wanted to. You record your short video that you are turning in um, in order to describe that. It. It's only worth five points, but you definitely want to get those five points. So this is where you'll turn everything in. You can upload your files. You could even use the webcam here if you want um, in order to uh, upload a video. And remember to keep that video brief because if it's too big, uh, then it will be a problem to upload it. Okay. Any other, any other questions or anything? And again, I'll be going through all of that in more detail next week, but I just wanted to make sure um, that if you were interested in working ahead that you did uh, you know, have enough information to go ahead and, and start doing that. The other thing that I have for you, I do of course have your Twitch extra credit question for this week. So let me go ahead and put this in here. This will be helpful um, in review for the final exam. So your uh, extra credit question, right? What are the APA's five general ethical principles? What are the APA's five general ethical principles? And you just need to list them. So when you're ready to do that, you can go back to Canvas and you'll go to week 16, which is the week that we are currently in. Week number 16 of the semester. Uh, hard to believe still. It's hard for me to believe that we're at the end. Uh, this has definitely been a strange semester. Not so much for us, we were been online the whole time, but a little bit strange of a semester. But you'll click on optional Twitch extra credit number 16. And then up here at the top, start assignment. And this will allow you to type your response and go ahead and submit and get those two points of extra credit. We have two points for today and two points next week. 
and then um, that is it. So uh, make sure that you get going on the materials for week 16. They're all due by the end of this week, Sunday night, like usual. If you want to get started on next week, go for it. Those materials are definitely there uh, and open for you to begin. I'm trying to be very mindful of your time because I know that everyone is busy and overwhelmed. So I want to make sure um, that I'm not going over or taking more time than I need to. But I'm, I will hang out for a little while. If any of you do have any uh, questions about the materials for this week or next week, I'm here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and minimize my video so I'm not just staring at myself. But if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, hang in there. Good luck with this week and next week. Uh, try and uh, take care of yourselves. I know this is a stressful and busy time. So uh, hang in there, take care of yourselves, and I will hope to see you all for our last live stream next Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. So uh, again, take care of yourselves, and um, I will hang out for a little while if you do think of any questions for me.